Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Obtain, Evaluate, and Communicate Information, Level 2, Obtain and Combine Information. You can see in the box that I have quite a few texts that we're going to get to in a little bit. And the icon that represents information has both text and media in it. But remember, we always want to be gathering information or combining information based on some phenomena. And so the first thing you want to do as you look at information is to determine what is the phenomena I'm trying to better understand by obtaining and combining this information. And then as we think about information, it's really three steps. How do I gather or obtain information? How do I evaluate that information? And then finally, how do I communicate that information with someone else? Um, the way that we'll evaluate in this video is we're going to combine information from multiple sources and then communicate that information. And so after watching this video, you should be able to do the same with objects like these media around space debris or these different texts around storms. I'm going to start by showing you my thinking around texts that are related to camouflage and then you'll have a chance to do the same with sharks. And so let me clean this up and then we'll get started. Okay, so you can see that I have three texts on here. This is Can You Find Me About Animal Camouflage. We've got the Mixed Up Chameleon and then Living in a Brown World. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to write down and identify what's the phenomena. Okay, so what I'm going to be gathering information on is animal camouflage. And so I better define what camouflage is. But the first thing I want to do is just look through these three sources. So I have three sources and what I want to be looking for is to make sure that all of these are informative text. And so maybe you're familiar with this one. This is the Mixed Up Chameleon by Eric Carle. And so I can see as I look at this right away that this is not informative text. It's a wonderful story, but it's not informative text. And so I'm not going to include that as I look at information. And then as I start to look at the other information, we've got living in a brown world. Um, so it's got a table of context, which is always a good indication that this is nonfiction, informative text. It's got information on different lizards. So there's photograph. So this looks like this will meet. And then if we look at the next one, a book about animal camouflage. So I want to make sure that this is factual information, which it looks like it is. And so as I look at these, I want to make sure before I dig in and obtain some information, I should always write down the sources that I'm going to use as I do that. And that'll be important later. Okay, so the first one, and you can always find this on the inside, uh, Living in a Brown World by Black Birch Press, and this is by Tanya Stone. And I'm going to just refer to that as source one, and then let me write down the other source. Okay, so these are the two sources. I'm going to leave these over here. That'll be important when I'm starting to communicate information at the end. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to just go through and pull information. I always like to pull information that I think is interesting that I don't know about animal camouflage. So let me start with this and I'll just record some little bits of information. And now let me look at some other interesting animal camouflage from the second text. Okay, so from the first text, I'm talking about the banded rattlesnake. It lives in rocky areas of Arizona and makes it look like it has different pieces. So I wonder if 
predators can't see it. And then in trees, a chameleon turns green to look like leaves. And in grass, a chameleon turns brownish or grayish green. So you can see I'm also writing the numbers on it. And that's how I could go back and say, this is where I found this information, or this is the source of the information. But if I look back at the phenomena, remember, I really want this to be about animal camouflage. And these are really just different types of camouflage. So it'd be great if I could get a definition for what that is. Okay, so what I wrote here is camouflage is a way to survive. It helps animals disappear or seem to be something else. And so this is from that second source, Can You Find Me? And so what I've been doing now is I'm really starting to evaluate the evidence that I have. And so I think this is really important, this idea of what camouflage is. If I'm communicating that, I would probably start with that. And so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to start combining the information from these two sources so I can communicate that information. I think maybe I would start with uh, rattlesnakes as an example and then maybe move to chameleons as I start to organize how I'm going to communicate. Now this could be written. I would make sure I want to quote things that come directly from the source. But let me show you how it organize and then communicate this information. So I would say according to these sources, both by Tonya, Tanya Stone and Jennifer Louie, uh, Dewey, camouflage is a way, it helps, a way to survive. It helps animals disappear or seem to be something else. And maybe I would list the two examples. So I would say maybe there are two examples of this. So I'd start with what camouflage is, and then I'd say two examples. The banded, rattles banded rattlesnake live in rocky areas. The bands make it look like different pieces. And so going back to the camouflage, it allows the rattlesnake to look like rocks or to blend in with the rocks. And then for this other example, in trees, a chameleon turns green to look like leaves. So it's pretending to be something else. And in grass, a chameleon turns brown or gr grayish green, and that allows it to look some like something else. In this case, it's going to be grass. And so that's my thinking around animal camouflage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up another set of texts, and then you'll have a chance to do the same. OK, for the second one, we've got obviously three texts that are on sharks. And so let me write down the phenomenon. And then what I would encourage you to do is go through and obtain information and combine information from these sources. First thing you want to do is make sure, are these all informative texts? Are any of these kind of fiction? We'd want to remove that. And so then pause the video, do that. I'll put links to selected portions of the text down below. And then unpause, come back, and we'll see how our thinking compares. Okay, so the first thing you want to look at is, as I go through the text, I want to make sure that these are informative texts. So they're giving us information. It's not uh, just fiction. And so as I look through it, looks like we've got information in this text just on lots of different types of sharks. And so this looks like, just based on the titles and some of the information in the callouts, this looks good. Let's look at the next one. So this is, seems like a great story, but it's mostly about a big shark and a little shark. And so I would call this not informative text, so I'd get rid of that. And then let's look at the last one. So this has one of the hallmarks of nonfiction informative text. It's got a table of contents, and so I can see more information. And again, based on just like the pictures and the callouts, this looks like this is informative text as well. And so the next thing, remember, that you want to do, once you've decided on your sources, we have to write those sources down so that we can give credit for the information, where the information came from. Okay, so I'm going to include my sources over here. You can see why this is important. They both have the same title, Sharks. And so it's important that I know who wrote them and then who's the publisher. And so the next thing I want to do is just start going through and gathering information. So let's start looking through this. 
Okay, that's amazing. So let's say the first thing I open it up and it's giving me information about shark teeth. And so let me just change what my phenomena is going to be. And then it looks like a lot of this book's about different types of sharks. And so let me just write down some information on shark teeth. Okay, so two bits of information that I've learned is that a shark's mouth can have up to six rows of teeth. It's kind of shown in here. You can kind of see the rows behind. And that when a new tooth falls out, another one takes its place. So that's some interesting information. Now let's see if I have any information in the second text about teeth. And so I can see here on page 16 through 19 what big teeth you have. And so let me gather some information from that. Okay, so you can see that I started with information from source one, and then I found more information on the teeth here in source two, and then I went back to source one because I'm interested in the great white shark, and now I know, based on just a little bit of reasoning, evaluating the evidence that they must rip their food. So now I've gone through and I've gathered or obtained the information. What I wanna do is I want to evaluate that information. And so how do I organize this in a way or how do I combine this information? I wanna tell some kind of a story. And so I don't know, what do I wanna start with? I think I would start with Okay, so I'm gathering, I'm, I'm adding a little bit of information to give it context. I said shark teeth can tell us how shark feed. I could say a shark's mouth can have up to six rows of teeth and when one tooth falls out, another takes its place. Um, different sharks have different teeth. Long teeth are for catching, flat teeth are for grinding, and serrated are for ripping. That tells us that the great white shark rips its food. And so also I wanna make sure that I'm giving sources or giving credit to where I'm pulling those quotes or those sources from. And so now that you've learned how to obtain combined information, I've got a couple of other examples. We did camouflage in sharks, but I'll link some text down below on weather, or you could look at a bunch of media and look at how we could clean up space debris. But that is obtain combined information and communicate that information. Just start by gathering the information. Don't forget to, to um, cite your sources and then communicate the information. I always thinking about what story am I hoping to tell? And that could be a written story story or it could just be like oral like I just gave to you. So that's obtain, combine, and communicate information and I hope that's helpful.